Okay, in this video, we're gonna do a pretty straightforward example of finding the area between curves, specifically y equals cosine of pi x and y equals four x squared minus one. So often when you have a trig function and a polynomial, you're kind of in trouble because the intersection points tend to be pretty messy and you'll need a calculator, but um, that's actually not the case for this one. So let's see what we can do. So these are our curves and I'm gonna start off by graphing it. It's always a good idea to graph the region that you're dealing with. So let's do that. So x and y axes. So cosine of pi x has a period of two pi divided by pi, which is two. So I wanna to go to two on the positive x axis. I'm also gonna to go to negative two. Um, so two, one, negative one, negative two. And then divide it up again. Um, so these are at, uh, I don't know why I didn't actually use the, uh, <laughs> I didn't use the graph paper after I put up the graph paper. Um, so then I divide it in half again. So you get one half, one, uh, 1.5, two, and so on. So now I want to plot. So it's cosine, so it starts at maximum. So it's maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. Then I'm gonna go the other way also. So another intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. Kind of fill in my curve. So I, it presupposes that you know how to graph cosine, uh, which hopefully you do. If not, uh, I'll put a link to how I graph cosine. Um, and you can follow along with that. <clears throat> so I have my cosine graph. Now I need to graph my um, polynomial here. Well, it has a y-intercept of negative one. So let's put that. Then I gotta figure out where it equals zero, which honestly, hopefully, is gonna be at one of the x-intercepts of the cosine graph. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna have a problem. So let's see. We need four x squared minus one to equal zero, which means x squared is equal to one fourth, which means that x is either plus or minus one half. So that's good for us because that's those two points and we can graph. And so we know our intersection points that give us our region are going to be at uh, negative one half and one half. So those are gonna be the bounds for our integral. So now we can start our integral. So it's the integral from negative one half to one half. And then it's the top curve, which is cosine of pi x minus the bottom curve, which is 4x squared minus one, which I'm putting in parentheses to make sure I could distribute that negative. And then we have a dx. And then uh, I'm just gonna dive in and do this. So the antiderivative of cosine of pi x is, there should be a one over pi by the chain rule. And then the antiderivative of cosine is sine. So it's one over pi sine of pi x. You could do u substitution on that, like an indefinite integral on the side if you'd prefer. Um, but I just kind of do it in my head and, and move on. And then I'm gonna say minus, and then if I find the antiderivative of four x squared, it's gonna be four thirds x cubed. And the antiderivative of one is gonna be x. So I get the quantity four thirds x cubed minus x. And then uh, all of this is from negative one half to one half. I'm aware there are a lot of things I could have done to improve this as I went through it, and I'll deal with those at the end or at least point them out. Um, so here I'm just gonna substitute in the upper bound so just plug it in here, get this, use all your parentheses. So we have all of this, and then it's gonna be minus substituting the lower bound. So we have this, minus, parentheses matter a lot when you're doing this, like that. Okay, and then uh, I just went through and kind of simplified it. So. Uh, the first thing simplifies into one over pi, like the sine of pi over two is one. Um, so that part's just one over pi. And then the second part, um, you get four thirds times one eighth is, uh, four thirds times one eighth is uh, one sixth, no, two sixths, one third, four thirds, one sixth. I don't even know, I worked it out. Uh, four thirds, one, I'm not feeling all that great. Um, so you get one third overall. And then minus the quantity, when you plug it in here, you get negative one over pi, and then minus one third. And then all of this overall is two over pi plus two over three. So that's actually the area of the region bounded by the curves. Um, if you look at the original uh, integral that we wrote, there's a couple things going on. Or if you just look at the figure, you kind of get a sense of this. Um, so there's at least two improvements that we could have done. Um, one would have made it a little bit easier. One would have made it a lot easier. So the first thing I could have done is I definitely could have um, distributed the negative. So if I distribute the negative there, um, like up here, 
I wouldn't have had to deal with as many parentheses, and that probably would have been a really good thing. The second thing, which is way more important, is I, I could have noticed that cosine of pi x minus 4x squared plus 1 is actually an even function. And since it's an even function, what I could have done is I could have rewritten the whole integral as 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 half of cosine of pi x minus 4x squared plus 1 dx. And that would have been a much easier problem to solve. So you should always look to see those sorts of things. And having the figure is really helpful because when you look at that, you just think like that's definitely an even um, function that we're dealing with or an even region. Um, okay, so uh, uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't do that mental arithmetic, but uh, we got through the problem at the end. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.